Hey Morgan, did you watch the season finale of Fear the Walking Dead season 5? Yeah, I did. What did you think of it? Well, I, I kind of thought it sucked. I, I didn't like the fact that I got shot and almost died and everything. Wait, I mean, you didn't completely die. I mean, you looked kind of screwed at the end of the season, but you didn't completely die. I mean, just think of what happened to Rick in Season 9 of The Walking Dead. He almost died and got killed by an army of walkers, but he got rescued by a helicopter. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, you know how it is. I don't die. Well, at least I don't think I do. Hey, what's up guys? Spencer Rhodes here, and this is my review for Fear of the Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 16, the season finale. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get this part out of the way. For those of you that don't know, I'm kind of obsessed with Morgan. I'm a huge Morgan fan. Just just ever since his episode in, in Season 3 of The Walking Dead, Clear, where he was crazy, I just became really just invested in the character and, and his story, and I love the actor's performance. And over the years, I've just developed so much investment in him. He, I mean, he's he's been on the franchise, you know, he's been on both shows, The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, since the very beginning, you know, since the first episode of season one, which aired in 2010. Morgan has been alive, and he's been around for a whole decade. So killing him off, I mean, that's just like the end of an era. Even if you're not crazy about the character like I am, you'd have to admit that, you know, killing off a character on a Walking Dead franchise that's been alive and out there for an entire decade, that's, that's a huge deal. And I've just been so invested in him. I, you know, I was surprised that he survived season six, season seven, and season eight of The Walking Dead, I was really worried. A lot of people thought that Morgan was going to die in season eight, that Morgan was going to be the big death in all that war that maybe, you know, he would, his, his final words to Rick while he was dying, that would be the thing that, that gets Rick to lock Negan up. After all, Morgan was the one that built that cell. So it, it sort of add a little substance to that, that Rick honors Morgan by, by the whole all life is precious thing. So even Negan's life is precious. And Rick honors Morgan's memory by using Morgan's cell to lock Negan up, which is what Morgan would have wanted. I was really, really worried about Morgan dying in season eight. I did not want Morgan to die, and I just, I just, like, I prayed to the ceiling like a hundred times back in 2017, 2018. You know, don't let Morgan die in all at war. Don't let Morgan die in all at war. And he, the, the middle of season eight happened, and Carl showed a bite on his ribs, and I was like, holy crap. Okay, they're not killing Carl and Morgan in the same season. I know they're not doing that. So, it's not Morgan, it's Carl! Like, I, I wasn't a Carl fan, so I was like, yeah, yay! They're letting Morgan live and they're killing off Carl. Carl's gonna be the death that, that gets Rick to lock me get up, which of course it was. And Morgan got to live on. And he wasn't in season 9, but he got to be the main character of Fear the Walking Dead. He replaced Madison. And, you know, I just, I was just so happy, and I still liked his parts in Season 4. I know Season 4 had some rough spots, a, a, few, a few of The Walking Dead Season 4 had some rough spots, but I was still a fan of Morgan's character development and Morgan's story. And I was just so glad that this character I really loved got to be, like, this main lead character on the spinoff. And I, I didn't think his writing was terrible or anything. And... I just really, really love the character, and you know, as far as favorite characters go, he's basically tied with Abraham for me. He's tied with Abraham, and and Abraham has been dead for so long now, and Morgan has had like at this point three times, four times, five times the screen time that Abraham got in his run on The Walking Dead. At this point, I mean, time has kind of done its thing. Abraham has been dead for three years now. I've, I've, I've kind of just moved along with my life, even though Abraham's death just really broke my heart. 
So I guess maybe Morgan, since I've, I've spent so much more time with him and I've been more invested in his character, Morgan is just like a thread above Abraham as far as favorite characters go. So basically Morgan is my favorite character. And for me, if he dies, it used to be like I wouldn't watch the, the Walking Dead franchise at all, but at this point I'll probably stick with The Walking Dead, but I'll be done with Fear the Walking Dead. I mean, Fear the Walking Dead really, really just hasn't been that good anyway. If they kill off Morgan, I just don't want to watch that show anymore. The, the, the thing is, you know, if since Morgan is my favorite character and I don't want him to die, there's all these hundreds of other characters in, in both shows and they can kill them off and I'll be okay. You know, they won't touch, as long as they don't touch, you know, my Morgan, it's, it's good, it's okay. So it's kind of a good thing, but it's kind of a bad thing, because if they do kill him off, it's like, oh, damn it, that really, really sucks. And, I mean, I know what people are thinking, well, it's The Walking Dead, everyone dies. Well, no, I mean, I think there's something special about Morgan, since he's a season one character. He, Carol, Dale, Rick are the only characters from season one that are left. And they made him the freaking main character. They replaced Madison with him so that he could be the, the main character. If that doesn't give you some job security, I don't know what the hell does. If that doesn't make me think a little bit, well, maybe they won't kill him off. I mean, Rick was the lead character of The Walking Dead. That helped him out. He's still alive. And he, the actor left the show and he's still alive. So for Morgan to be the, the lead character of Fear the Walking Dead, I feel like I have a right. I have a right to be like, don't kill him off. And more, plus, he, he can leave. He can leave and be out there. I'm okay with that. He can leave and go to the Rick Grimes movies. I'm okay with that. You know, he's done it before. He's left. He's just sort of been alive and out there. I want Morgan to always be alive and out there. You know, not dead, but he can be alive and out there. So, you know, he can leave. I know some people are like, oh, Morgan's the reason the Fear the Walking Dead sucks. Um, okay, fine. If, if, the, if that, even if that's true. He doesn't have to die. He can just leave. He can go rescue Rick Grimes in the movie trilogy. Or he can go back to The Walking Dead. There's other options besides him dying. So don't tell me that him dying is this big necessary thing. They literally just killed... They killed the leader character in Travis in Season 3. They killed a the leader character in Madison in Season 4. So don't tell me that killing off the leader character is going to fix things. <laughs> They've done it too many times. They need to change that and and change that up and, and not do that with Morgan. So, okay, I'm not a spoiler channel. This is not a spoiler YouTube channel. We do not do Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead spoilers. We don't really do spoilers of any kind on this channel. If there's spoilers in comments, I delete them. I give you a warning. Hey, don't do that. And I really just hate spoilers. I hate that we have to deal with them. I hate spoiler leaks. I hate that, that you know, if you if you want to watch, especially if you have a popular YouTube channel where people just come at you and dump spoilers in the in your comments with without a care in the world, that you know, if you if you want to watch a Walking Dead episode without spoilers, you have to stay away from the internet for a week or two weeks or a month, and that's ridiculous. I don't want to have to stay away from the internet, but you know, spoilers are so such a pain to avoid. I'm getting kind of off track, but I hate spoilers, I'm against spoilers, we don't do spoilers on this channel, spoiler comments, you, they get deleted, you get a warning, if you do it more than once, you get banned. So, okay, so this is a non-spoiler channel. However, a few days ago, or a week ago, or whatever, when there, there were the spoilers about the finale, that, that Morgan was going to be, be dying in the finale. That's an exception, okay? If I find out Morgan is, is possibly dying, I want to know ahead of time. You know, I, I don't want to wait any longer than I have to. I want that band-aid, you know, ripped off. I want to find out as, as soon as possible. I don't, want, I don't want to have my soul crushed while I'm watching the actual episode. I would want to be prepared. I would want that band-aid ripped off. So, Morgan dying is kind of an exception as far as spoilers go. And I heard about the the Morgan dying spoilers. To be to be fair, I wasn't looking for spoilers. It was another YouTube channel, Make a Path Presents, and he's like me. He's a Walking Dead channel, 
kind of, I mean, he does other stuff, but he makes Walking Dead videos. He doesn't do Walking Dead spoilers, but he made a video about Morgan possibly dying. That's where I first got that information from. And from there, I started searching around, looking, you know, are, is Morgan dying? Is my man dying? I want to find out. What the fuck? I, I, I'm going to stop watching Fear the Walking Dead. And so, yeah, I, it started with that video, and it's it's funny because I got I got so worried and so upset because at first it seemed like he was just going to die in the finale, finale. And if you watch the episode, he doesn't die in the finale. It's not good, but it's 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 not hopeless. It's not completely hopeless. And um, it's just funny because at first it was like Morgan's dying. And then there's like, it's a Morgan death cliffhanger. Like, and I, when I heard the words Morgan death cliffhanger, I thought Morgan dies and that's the cliffhanger. Like he, he dies and that's like the ending. And that's what makes it a cliffhanger. Um, so it, at first it seemed like Morgan was definitely going to die. And then it became Morgan gets shot in the chest and he's surrounded by walkers and he's bleeding out and that's the cliffhanger. So it's not a 100% confirmed death, just he gets shot in the chest, surrounded by walkers, cliffhanger. And I thought, oh, that's why it's Morgan death cliffhanger. It's, it's a cliffhanger, he doesn't completely die. But getting shot in the chest, Jesus Christ, ah, jeez, no. And then it was, he gets shot in the shoulder, and it's a Morgan cliffhanger. And I was like, okay, that's completely different. The shoulder is completely different from the chest. I had a hard time imagining Morgan getting shot in the chest and surviving. You know, if you read the Walking Dead comics, there's a main character get, that gets shot in the chest and they die. You know, they die. There's kind of this rule where if you get shot in the shoulder, you're going to live. Like, it's almost guaranteed. Shot in the shoulder is just, it's a wound and you always live. So I was like, oh, it's the shoulder? Why did you tell me it's the shoulder? Why did you, what's all this crap about it being the chest? So it was just funny because at first it was like, Morgan dies and then he doesn't die but he gets shot in the chest. And then it's, he, he gets shot in the shoulder and he doesn't die. So it was just like, what the fuck? Why, the exaggerated information from days ago, just, I could have done without the heart attack. <laughs> If I knew it was the shoulder and it, he's just surrounded, he's surrounded by walkers, and I get that he can still die, but it's not as bad as it, as it could have been. You know, it's not as bad as it could have been. I mean, he's my man, you know, Morgan's my man, and I don't want him to die. And, it, you know, the same thing kind of happened with Rick. In fact, it was almost very, very similar to, to what happened with Rick. Uh, a rod, a metal rod goes through Rick's shoulder and he's surrounded by walkers and it's a cliffhanger. Same thing with Morgan. Literally, shoulder injury, s surrounded by walkers, bleeding out, unconscious, cliffhanger ending. We find out what happens to him next episode and he lives. That's literally what happens to Rick in season 9. So I feel like they, they can do it with with Morgan. I mean, I think in season 6 of The Walking Dead, both Daryl and Carol get shot in the shoulder and it, it gets treated like a bug bite, like the, just this little boo-boo. They're fine the next episode, like literally. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, but that's how they treat getting shot in the shoulder on these shows. And I get that it looks bad, but I, I, he, you know, he's, he's bleeding out. Walkers are very, very close to him. And I'll admit, I didn't like how the walkers were really, really close to him and were coming at him, and then it cuts to black. I'll admit, I didn't like that. That was a little scary, but it's still it's still not completely hopeless. I feel like the, the season six premiere, at the, the, all of a sudden something happens that drives the walkers away and Morgan gets rescued. I feel like that's what's going to happen. If they're wanting to kill Morgan at the end of season five, why didn't they just do it? You know, why did they make it to, why, if Jenny tries to shoot him in the face, why doesn't she succeed in shooting him in the face? Because they're not going to kill him off, is what I feel like. You know, I feel like they left it ambiguous. They left it like, oh, it's close, it's close, it's close, cut to black. Because in the premiere of season six, there's going to be this last second thing, and he gets saved and he gets rescued. So, I feel like that's what they're going to do. And a lot of people have been talking about how 
they did it this way because they're not sure if Lenny James is going to come back or not in season six. Because maybe Lenny James doesn't want to be on the show anymore and he's unsure about staying on the show. So the writers were like, oh, okay, well, we'll do this, this ending in season five where Morgan may or may not die. And then we find out in the season six premiere. That way, Lenny James can decide if he wants to stay or not. If he decides to leave, we kill him. If he decides to stay, he gets saved at the last second. Which, uh, yeah, that could be it. If, if that's the case, I, I hope... I hope Lenny James decides to stay because, I mean, for obvious reasons, I just explained why I like the character so much. Um, I so I would hope that he decides to stay and they don't kill him off. I hope that that's what ends up happening. Uh, you know, um, I would want Lenny James to decide to stay. But has he, has there been any interview where he said that? Maybe, maybe I haven't seen any any interviews about the finale after the finale aired so I don't know if, if there's been an, in, an interview with Lenny James where he says I'm not sure if I'm coming back or not so they're, they're leaving it open for me to die or come back or, or die and live so if, if there's a, an actual interview with Lenny James where Lenny James says he's not sure if he wants to stay on the show or not like let me know you know you can drop a link in the comments whatever because I have yet to see anything that indicates that Lenny James wants to leave. It was the same thing with Ruben Blades, Daniel Salazar's actor. Everyone kept saying that, that he doesn't want to be on the show, that he doesn't want to be on the show. And I was like, no, he's just going off to do his music. And, I mean, sure enough, season five, he's been it pretty, he was in it pretty much all the way through. So, you know, unless I see an interview with Lenny, Lenny James where Lenny James says, I'm not sure if I want to stay anymore, I'm not sure if I like being on the show anymore, then there's no evidence that supports that he wants to leave. That's just speculation. But yeah, I haven't seen any, any indication whatsoever that Lenny James is actually wanting to leave Fear the Walking Dead. Maybe in season six, the character dies, and then we find out years from now in an interview, oh yeah, Lenny James didn't want to be on the show anymore. But I mean, I I hope he I hope he wants to stay. I hope he wants to stay. I mean, I just Lenny James is one of the few people from season one that is still around and has actually stayed, along with Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride, and that's pretty much it. So I'm hoping that Lenny James wants to stay. So I'm hoping Morgan survives. I'm hoping he lives. I'm a big fan of the character. If he really needs to get out of the show, have him leave and be out there and alive. You know, he's done it before, so do it that way. Don't kill him off. <laughs> do not kill Morgan! <laughs> okay, so as far as the episode goes, um, I mean, I don't know. It was alright. It was okay. Um, I, I, I liked that June and John had their wedding. I liked that scene. I enjoyed that scene. Um, you know, Virginia and, and the settlers them taking everyone that that was sort of that was really sad and painful to watch because these characters have spent the entire season together well some of them since season four some of them before then have been together and they're just being dragged apart desperately crying out their their last words to one another while all these these assholes are just shoving them into cars that was kinda sad for, for a show that's really like a lot happier and more upbeat than The Walking Dead that was actually kind of an emotional segment for me, watching all these characters get pulled apart. And I can't remember if, what about Dwight. I, I don't remember. I don't remember if I remember Dwight getting put into a car or not. I don't remember the settlers pushing Dwight into a car. I, maybe it's just my memory, but I don't remember Dwight being put into a car. And I, I thought Dwight was gonna do it. I thought Dwight agreed to to be taken. So maybe he's he 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 ran off. He's out there, and he he's the one that sees Morgan. Uh, but I, I like I said, he might have actually been put into a car, and I just don't remember. Or maybe it happened off screen. But that would be weird. Maybe they left White out for a reason, and that reason has to do with saving Morgan. I hope so. <laughs> but yeah, the, this episode is okay. Um, 
The one thing I'm worried about is the whole thing with they're separated, they're separated all over the place. And, and so I feel like, I mean, the, the season already had bottle episodes. You know, the season already had bottle episodes where we just see one or two characters at a time for a few episodes. And then we get like the mid-season finale and we see everyone. And then we get the finale and we see everyone. And that's it. Every other episode is just bottle episodes where we just see one or two characters at a time. And now I feel like they're, they're, they're making it so much easier to do it that way. <laughs> because literally every single character is separated and I mean my god how many bottle episodes are we gonna get in season six where we just get one or two characters at a time because literally every single character is separated so I imagine they're just on a low budget or something and they're just, we're just going to have a shitload of bottle episodes where we just we just see June by herself we just see John by himself we just see Luciana by herself we just see Strand by himself and then we're gonna get the mid-season finale and everyone will get back together or maybe it'll be the finale and everyone will get back together season six that's so stupid that's so dumb writers we don't like this we don't like the bottle episodes Put the characters together, stop with the bullshit. Uh, it's probably a budget thing, it's probably a money thing, but guess what? It's the Walking Dead franchise. AMC has more money than it knows what to do with, so don't complain to me about money and budget. AMC needs to get off their ass and spend money. You pay Norman Reedus a hundred billion dollars an episode on The Walking Dead, spend money on Fear the Walking Dead, so we don't have to keep having these stupid ass bottle episodes where there's just one or two characters in each episode. And the whole plot twist with Grace is pregnant. It's not a tumor. She keeps fainting and passing out because she's pregnant. I mean... I'm, I feel like I should give season six a chance to explain it. Like, we're going... I feel like in season six, since Grace is still alive, and I guess she might be alive a little longer than she thought or we thought because she might not have a tumor from the radiation. I guess she's still eventually going to die. I don't know how that works, but she's not dying as quickly as we thought she would because she's actually pregnant, not not having to deal with cancer yet, but she's just pregnant. So I guess season six, I want to give season six a chance as far as Grace goes because I feel like they could easily do a flashback where they show her meeting up with some guy and, and maybe I mean hell they're, they're, it seems like they really love their bottle episodes because they literally structured the show and the characters to where they're all separated and you know damn well the first half of season six is just gonna be bottle episode after bottle episode after bottle episode so we're probably just gonna get a bunch of episodes with one or maybe two characters in each one so season six could easily have a bunch of flashbacks with Grace, or maybe an entire flashback episode with Grace. Um, sort of how we, we get an entire flashback episode with Morgan back on The Walking Dead with, with Eastman, where it explains how Morgan became this peaceful guy. We'll get this whole flashback episode with Grace with this other guy that explains them, you know, meeting each other. Maybe they fall in love, maybe they don't, maybe they hook up, maybe they don't, but she ends up getting pregnant. Uh, d did she not even think that was a possibility? I mean, it's the apocalypse, so I'm guessing there's like no like condoms or whatever like that aren't expired or whatever, so she, she should know that, that what they did could possibly <laughs> get her pregnant. So it's like, w did you not think that was a possibility? That's my question. How did she not think that that was a possibility of, of, of a thing that could happen? How is she not even remotely worried about it, of the possibility of being pregnant during season five? I, that, see, that part I don't understand. But, yeah, hopefully there's going to be an explanation on that. And it just, it kind of seems out of character for her because she, didn't she say that she, she didn't really have many relationships and, and that she was awkward with men or something? Like, she seemed really socially awkward, but, uh, I mean, maybe she just hooked up with a guy. I don't know. I'm guessing they'll explain it next season, but, yeah, overall, this show just kind of sucks. I mean, I'm just tired of the whole crap cliffhangers. I mean, it's doing what The Walking Dead did. Remember Negan? 
Who's Negan gonna kill? Oh, cut to black, you have to wait six months. Cliffhanger, and then next season, it's everyone separated. Bottle episodes, bottle episodes, bottle episodes, bottle episodes. That's literally, that's literally what Fear the Walking Dead is doing. It's, it's like season seven, season six cliffhanger all over again. Season seven structure, where all the characters are miserable and separated. And it's like the end of the season, they start to come back together. And by then, you're so bored, you just wanna stab yourself in the face. I mean, it's just, what the hell, writers? What the... Just... I'm... I'm... Fear the Walking Dead sucks. <laughs> I honestly enjoyed the first four seasons. Yes, including season two. Yes, including Martha. I thought she was such a bad villain, she was good. Look, I bet some people are gonna rewatch season four. Even the back half of season four. And I think the back half of season four looks like a masterpiece compared to season five. Like, any of season five. I always felt like the back half of season four was not that bad. And, and, I mean, I've, I've never felt more strongly about that than after season five's shit show. I'm just kind of over it. The Fear of the Walking Dead just sucks. I'm glad that there's hope for my man Morgan. I'm glad that my man Morgan might still be alive. But, it, the show just kind of sucks. I mean, I'm just... I was hoping that the finale would do something really exciting, like... Sherry comes out of nowhere, or Madison and Troy Otto comes out of nowhere, or, or we get the helicopter people back, or Morgan finds out about Rick Grimes. Something exciting, you know? We didn't get any of that. You could have killed a character besides Morgan, had that be the ending, and that might have been kind of cool. But what do they do? They just have everyone get separated so that we we have to wait six months and then the first half of season six is just going to be a bunch of bottle episodes of everyone being separated like one character in each episode and then the mid-season finale maybe five characters and then the finale they all get back together that's what they're gonna do that's what they're gonna do and it's stupid and it sucks the bottle episodes were bad enough as it was and you made it worse and then you know, I'm obsessed with Morgan, so what do they do? They, they, they fucking have him get shot in the shoulder and he's bleeding out and he's about to die and I have to wait six months. I remember at the end of season four of Fear the Walking Dead, Morgan was alive and he was okay and he was happy because he was going to go rescue people and save people and I was like, yay, Morgan survived season four of Fear the Walking Dead. I get this six month rest period where I don't have to worry about Morgan dying, this, this six month rest period. Well, I don't get that six month rest period this time because he, he's a cliffhanger. Ugh, Fear the Walking Dead sucks. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I, just, I, I'm, I can't believe the direction they took the characters in the show and I'm just baffled and and I just I give up. It, the show sucks. I like the first four seasons. That's it. Maybe season six will be good but who cares? I'm not gonna be open-minded about it and it, 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 it needs more than a good trailer. It needs more than a good first episode. You know, if season six is actually going to be good, it actually needs to be good. Otherwise, I'm not even going to be open-minded about it. Fuck it. Fuck the show. I'm done. I'm done with Fear of the Walking Dead. Like, I'll keep watching, but I'm done having an open mind, trying to convince myself the show is still good. It sucks. I give up. I give up. It's crap. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, this review has already gone long enough. It'll probably be about 30 minutes, and that's after editing and cutting, so that's my review. So with all that said, don't be shy. Hit that like and subscribe. I'm not going anywhere. I make one to two Walking Dead videos per day, so please hit that subscribe button. Right now we are at 611 subscribers. My goal is to try to get to 700 in the next few months. So just remember, every subscriber counts. Every bit of support matters and is very, very appreciated. Hopefully we can get to that goal of 700. Anyway, with all that said, I am Spencer Rhodes, and I will see you guys later. Bye.